Welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. For today, we have the show. I mean, what can I say? You know, we have the here, the incredible, amazing, badass, superstar, the legendary, the incredible Emily. Emily, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm mean, fantastic. I mean, what better way to start up a fantastic, badass week than to be chatting with someone as, you know, as epic as you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever been described as epic before. That's really cool. Well, you better get ready because I'm gonna I'm gonna call you epic and badass a few times here. So, <laughs> all right, I'm ready. <laughs> there you go. Now, before we start, I do want to thank those who watch this. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps a lot. Without furthermore, let's jump in now, Emily. For those who don't know who is incredible, amazing superstar Emily, please tell us who you are. Uh, hi, um, my name is Emily. I uh, do a lot of theater um, all over the place. I've done um, theater in New York, New Jersey. I've done everything from like really small community theaters to off-Broadway. Um, I also have my own theater company that I run. It's called Red Mic Rep. And we are constantly doing new shows as like small projects as just Zoom readings and as big projects as uh producing new work and hoping to get some of it published very soon so. i love it i love it so <laughs> you so you're on the so you are on the process of doing everything basically I, I i yeah and i think at like every point in my life i've had a job in theater i've done um producing i've done general management i've done house management box office i was a facilities manager at a theater that i had no business being a facilities manager at no. <laughs> like i i feel like i've done all of the the different things in theater i love it so it's basically a one man show here a little bit <laughs> there you go i love it i love it now Let's jump in and tell me where this passion for acting started. Like what triggered it? Um, I, I, I think it was probably a, a, at least a little bit, the fact that I was an only child. So wow. growing up, I didn't have anyone else to play with. And yeah. I would just constantly have to imagine my, like imagine playtime with my dolls or other things. And I think that really kickstarted a creative thing, a creative spark in me of yeah. just loving to play pretend. And I remember in kindergarten, um, we had some like rinky dink little kindergarten show where all the parents could come and watch their kids. And I had a solo in When You Wish Upon a Star. And I had so many people come up to me afterwards and just praise me. And it just like went to my little five-year-old ego's head. And I was like, my God, I can't believe people will applaud you for playing pretend. This is amazing. I want to do this. Can I do this? And my dad was like, oh yeah, they're professional actors. And I was like, that, that is what I want to be. I want to get paid to play pretend and then have people praise me for it so five-year-old Emily was very vain and sassy and was like yes I want everyone to adore me how do I do this <laughs> there you go I love it and here you are right now <laughs> trying <Yeah>. anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely I mean, but you're making it happen that's incredible but tell me once you decided to make it into a professional career what were some of the challenges you had when you first started oh just the word no you hear no so much you hear no, no non-stop so it's just about training yourself to to be okay with the nose I mean it's I'm still bad at it I think everyone's probably bad with rejection yeah but like before it just used to be the worst thing in the world to me I would just crumble dramatically and be like mm. why why did I get this no and now I'm I'm not quite as dramatic about it I will really try and reframe Yep. Okay, what could I have done differently? Or, oh, I saw the other people in the room. I didn't look like anyone else. I don't think I was what they were envisioning. I've learned mm. to kind of retool my rejections a little bit or, or, or change change them in my head. Um, but definitely the hardest thing is just how frequently you hear the word no, especially yep. when you're starting out in this industry. Yep. I mean, nobody likes being rejected. You know, let's be you know, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, like, so I can understand how tough that that uh, that might be. But tell me how you handle the whole rejection shy yeah like how you manage to keep yourself in a positive mood you said you know regarding of how many rejections you have during the day say so. yeah it's again it's it's very difficult you have to really develop a thick skin and i i don't have the thickest of skins but it's a lot better than where i was like i was saying before it's just about reframing your rejections mm. or or being in a better headspace about it i've kind of 
gotten to the idea that everything happens for a reason. Okay. Like there were jobs that I really wanted and I didn't book and I was devastated. Mm-hmm. And then just a couple of weeks later, I ended up booking something that was not on my radar at all. And if I had booked that first job, I wouldn't have gotten that second job. And just going through that experience, and it was so deeply meaningful for me to get that work and yeah. to make the connections there. So I've come to just kind of accept a little bit of, of peace with it of, okay, this didn't work out, but there was a reason for it. And I'm going to find it. Mm, mm. Yeah, I do. I do think the same way you do. And also, I do agree that, I mean, I, I also think that if something somehow doesn't work at that moment, then you were not just ready for it. You know, then there's yeah. something else you need to learn first before jumping in into the into the next level. That's yeah, exactly. I mean, that is like a healthy way of seeing things instead of, you know, be being all miserable and feel like God. Yes. And yeah. and the keyword is yes, that is the healthy way to do it. I still am not a hundred percent there all the times. There are still roles that are or projects that are deeply meaningful yeah. to me. And I just I don't yeah, book them and I don't get them. And there will still be projects where I'll just be like, oh. And just dramatically cry and go, why? Um, but uh, for the most part, it's I, I, I'm i getting better about it and mm-hmm. reframing it in my head. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, it it sucks the fact that feeling miserable and that is super easy <laughs> and feeling like super optimistic and positive and everything is going to be all right. It's like the toughest stuff ever, you know? Yeah, it also I helps to that. just have like a support group. Like my parents are so lovely totally. to me. I've got a couple of friends that are in this industry that are just like, eh, they were idiots, keep going. Or this is terrible, keep going. You know, as long as you have a, a good support system as well yeah. that just encourage you and remind you, you don't suck helps. Yeah, absolutely. But tell me, <laughs> How you manage to prepare a character, of course, that I understand that depends on the role. But yeah, like what are your initial steps before jumping in into this whole journey, let's say? Yeah, I feel I'm actually quite lazy. Uh, I don't oh, I, I don't prepare that much, at least for auditions. Obviously, I want to get a good sense of the, the character. Mm-hmm. But there are some people that go into auditions where like I'll be sitting next to them and they just have every word highlighted. They've got every sentence like bracketed out with intentions. And it's like to win his affection here, to get him to like me, to like it's all of these these verbs. And it just feels like you're locked into a performance when you're just auditioning. Mm. And I don't like that. I like to be able to make decisions on the fly. I like to be malleable when I'm with a scene partner or if I'm like really set in my ways um I feel like I don't work well with a director like I want to be open to everything when I'm in the room and if I've just been rehearsing like this one scene this one way I'm not going to be receptive to the criticism or adjustments Mm -hmm. so in terms of auditions I always kind of feel lazy and I look around I'm like oh gosh I feel like such a bad actor when they're all like with note cards and things um but once you book a job it's very different it's just about figuring out the character and working from there with the director or a dramaturg and really discerning what makes your character tick I mean with historical shows it's very easy to do research at the time period and go down that rabbit hole and then with other things just figuring out what your character likes or just references made in the play and researching Mm. that way yeah I love that that's pretty cool you know I tell you what whenever you get that feeling that you're a bad actor be like no I'm not a bad actor I'm a badass actor (laughs) I'll get that tattooed somewhere on me I'll have it do it just do it i love it and tell me uh yeah like during like is there any any character that you have played that has affected you in a negative way somehow uh i wouldn't say negative ways but i've played characters that have had um greater emotional tolls than other characters um characters that have died in shows or that go through something extremely tragic in shows it is a little bit harder to shake those characters once you leave the theater at night um Mm. but it it, i i've never had like overall negative impacts just like there there are some characters where i'm like oh gosh like i'm definitely a little bit more depressed going in and out of the theater it's a little bit harder to shake them off of me at night but um no like truly negative things yeah okay okay oh okay and do you like once you yeah like once you finish um theater you go home is there any kind of ritual you usually do to be like you know what I'm done now, I'm just going to relax. Or is there anything you kind of do to disconnect your mind out of out of that and to be like return to be the real you, you, let's say? 
Yeah. Um, I, it sounds so silly, but I love just grabbing a drink after the show with either the cast or with someone that has come to see me in it. It is just a way of detoxing after the show. I think you need kind of like this, like a breath, like Hmm. in Shakespeare times when they were performing at the globe, all of the actors, regardless of whether it was a great comedy or a great tragedy, they would do a mask at the end, which is this ritual dance And it was their way of shaking off the characters. So imagine seeing Hamlet, everyone is dead on the floor and then they all just get up and they start doing a little jig. And that was, that was just their way of getting rid of the characters of moving on with their lives. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like going out and grabbing a drink with the cast and just kind of taking a collective, "Ah," like a deep breath and a sigh. Um, But if no one else is around, then I just go home and I'll usually watch a comedy or something just to get me to laugh and relax right before yeah. going to bed yeah and is there anything you usually do before going on stage I am obsessive with reading every line my character speaks before okay. going on stage it's m- my way of just kind of reminding myself of the lines and the order and just feeling really locked in and secure with it so mm-hmm. it could be a show that I've done God only knows how many times and I will still every single night sit there with my script backstage and just say aloud every single line and it's not even like I'm acting it I'll just be like reading it as if it's ingredients on a food carton but I make sure I hit and say every single line before I go on stage yeah okay I don't know why I started doing it or like what made me compelled to do it one time but I started doing it and then it just kind of stuck and it's just my ritual I I just say every line I'm going to say in the play out loud before I get on stage I love it but you know it is I mean I love the fact that every actor has like their thing to do it you know that there is yeah I mean it 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 kind of shows you that there is no actual manual of how to oh god no you know what I mean like it's completely different for everyone I have a friend who literally needs to throw up before she goes on stage because her stomach gets so nauseous every single performance she will go to the bathroom a half hour before curtain will throw up and then go on stage. And if she doesn't throw up, she's like freaking out and having a meltdown. She's afraid she'll throw up on stage. It's bizarre. It works for her. It's just, we're all different and weird humans and we all do different things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've met, yeah. Some of them are pretty funny. I remember once told me uh, that she run a mile before going on stage. Oh my God. That That would be my nightmare. That she will actually be running a mile before going on stage. So the blood and everything could get all pumped up. God bless her. That would be my nightmare. Yeah. And like the funniest one or like the the top should be, there's one who, uh, who eats a bag of uh, jelly beans before jumping in. I actually, um, a lot of times I eat happy meals before I go on stage, which everyone makes fun of me for. Um, but I, I, I've, I've been eating fast food for so long now. It's like the best thing for my stomach, as sad as that statement is. Oh, yeah. So I do get nervous before shows. So I always want to eat like a small amount of food that I know is going to stay in me. And as pathetic as that sounds, a happy meal is like the perfect little contained amount of food. Either fun. Yeah. I mean, they're good. They're, they're simple. They're delicious. And they're yeah, yeah, I don't know what you mean. But yeah. it freaks a lot of my cast members out because a lot of people can't eat before they go on stage. So to like see me shoving a giant like burger down my throat like three seconds before I go on stage is a little disconcerting to some people. But I it, if I'm going to eat if I'm going to eat before I go on stage, it's usually a happy meal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's your thing. Let's face it. You know, I love it. <laughs> I love that. Now, is there any type of character that you would refuse to play at some point? Because, you know, maybe the type of message, it's something that you don't believe in. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. Um, I have um, a history of suicide and mental illness in my family. And I okay. don't I don't think I would want to play a character that is suicidal. I think Mm. that might be too close to home for me. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. So I think I would probably stay away from that type of role or genre, but nothing else springs to mind immediately. Um, I did do a Woody Allen show once and I really regretted doing it once I I signed on to do it. I didn't realize he was the playwright, which was really stupid of me not to do my research. Um, So moving forward, I wouldn't do another Woody Allen show. 
um because it's I still feel like ick a little bit that I did mm. it but um in my playbill bio I was very proud uh, my last sentence I put in my bio and I couldn't believe the theater let me do it was I believe Dylan Farrow and so I was like I felt a little bit better about accepting the role and being in it with having that statement in my bio yeah. um but yeah that that would be a situation I wouldn't put myself in again as well yeah yeah it's true and 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 also I do yeah I mean I, w- I would th- I would be I would be on the same position of playing something tough on my personal life and now to have to revive that again even though that that it's in a safe you know it's in a safe environment yeah I yes. mean it's something I always but... live in and, and and deal with but to like actively play a character that is suicidal I think would just put me in too much of a negative yeah. headspace yeah thankfully because, yeah. it's never come up um I've never had to like actively walk away from a part like that and I don't necessarily know if I would 100% walk away if it was like an extraordinary play or playwright or opportunity but I would certainly give pause to it and like really Mm. check in with myself and make sure I was okay to do it before accepting it yeah absolutely I mean at the end even though you're doing it in a safe environment your body can tell the difference yeah you know and I think that is kind of the most that's a great way of putting it you know that your body is not it's not realizing that it's that it's that it's not real you know it's just yeah. you know so I, I i can understand how tough and challenging that might be and yeah i mean at the end it, i do have i have um yeah like uh with this platform i have seen that it's okay to have your nose i mean you deserve to have your nose you know you can't yeah. accept everything because you know, you never know. <laughs> you know so yeah yeah now moving on here uh a little bit tell me like yeah like how you like let's say that one day I call you and I tell you that I want to become an actor. Now here's a catch. I don't know anything about acting. It's your experience. I mean, just once, but that was like years ago, but that doesn't kind of first. Anyway, uh, my point here is what advice would you think that it would be, that it would be important for me to know before jumping in into this career? Um, I would say just one, know that you are going to get a lot of no's. It's not going to be easy. It does not magically happen for anyone. Um, so just be prepared for the no's. And I, I would say know that it's okay to say no to projects. Like I said yes to a lot of things just because I was like, I I'm starting out. I have to do all of this. I have to get experience. You kind of have a gut feeling when when a project's probably not going to pan out the way that you want it to, or you get a weird feeling with someone in the room. I would say trust your gut on when to say no, because you probably know when you should say no to something. Mm. And, and with the yeses, um, don't don't say no because you're scared. Say yes because you're scared. Those those projects, the ones that terrify, you usually are the the fun ones or the good mm. ones. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that. Take, I tell you what, if I ever become an actor and I get an award at some point, because I will, of course, <laughs> um, I will be mentioning you in my thank you speech. I even yes. will we'll cut, will cut like the whole trophy or anything in half, so you can have half of it. I will have it. Perfect. You know, let's let's share. You know, I would love that. There you go. I mean, let's make it happen. Anyway, um, now let's say that for your birthday, you get a time machine, but here's a catch. You can only travel once and to meet the 13-year-old version of yourself. So what advice or what would you have said to that little, to that, yeah, to that little you? Let's, yeah. Oh, gosh. I would just say that you are beautiful and you are talented and don't let anyone take that away from you. Like I, I, I had a really negative drama teacher in high mm. school and she... I almost didn't pursue acting because of how vitriolic she was with me yeah. and just drilling in me. I am not good enough to be an actor. I should not pursue this professionally. I will only humiliate myself if I go down this road. So I lost a lot, a lot of confidence in high school um, with this career. And it was only in college that I really found like a great community of professors and uh friends that were able to say no you are good at this you should pursue this Mm -hmm. so I would just tell like sweet baby Emily like you you are enough like just just keep going for it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise no 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 one else can tell you anything about yourself like just just keep doing you yeah I mean, being a teenager kind of sucks, right? It's awful. <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> absolute worst. Yeah. 
especially yeah, 13 awful. and 14 you're still a child but you're kind of an adult or you're heading towards it and it's just it's such an awkward weird period yeah it is kind of yeah it kind of sucks and also <laughs> i mean yeah i mean at the at the same time i mean you can't kind of blame yourself too much because you were just a kid you know you were yeah, just no, super like, naive you know when I look back I'm like very angry that my drama teacher said some of the things to me and other students at our school um had no business being that humiliatingly negative to anybody especially a child mm, but look at you now Ta-da! <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna, um, I'm yeah, gonna it's drop funny. a lot of a lot of us are successful. I went to a performing arts high school and yeah. uh, she really it, it was not pleasant to most of us there. And I think a lot of us really are out there and being successful in various fields. So yeah. you know, she, she can kind of suck it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like someone once told me that if you are on the process of, you know, becoming an actor, it's important to make sure that you have a, like a good chemistry with your with your with your teacher, you know, that if <clears throat> that if I if you know any reason or by any chance you don't have that connection, it's OK. Go find somebody, you know, go find yeah, another you one. You definitely you need know? someone in your corner like that. And it was devastating that I didn't have that with my drama teacher at my performing arts high school. But when I went to college, I had amazing professors, one of which I am still in touch with today she's gotten me so many jobs and gigs mm. just like on her word saying hire emily take emily use her so i i am very grateful that i did eventually find someone to have in my corner um it it, it helps so much like you said yeah <clears throat> yeah and you know i, I mean another thing that i that i love about uh talking with actors is the fact that you guys yeah i mean basically you guys are you, you guys are sometimes we'll go through hell you know and i do think that sometimes the uh, like people or the audience kind of misunderstand like the whole thing you know for yeah. some people might think that acting is just learning your lines and you're good to go i mean how difficult yeah. that can be you know what i mean or yeah, like yeah no it's so true you know or or like or like things like that but like once you start to dig a little bit you know on how the whole crap goes or you learn a little bit about about uh, about an actress you know history about uh, where how they started you know things like that I mean besides that you get the chance to relate in a lot of stuff you also start to understand how I mean like how challenging it is instead of this whole um, thing the media has taught us which is the I mean the fame the glow you know the parties yeah. the glamour and everything I mean which yeah but you know um, uh, a lot of people have told me that, that I mean that thing is like a very small part like super tiny part Yep. of all the work behind of it or like sometimes we watch this film and the actor or the actress is going to be like a new one you know and be like oh you know this guy came out of nowhere but once you realize once you check out a little bit about that, about that actor or actress you realize that i mean come on she's been working for almost 20 years now yeah yeah you know, let's face it you know yeah it's always funny when they'll say like oh this actor came out of nowhere oh like their big break and it's like they've been a working actor for like you said like 20 30 years like it's just it's funny how opportunities spring up and when they do and when you're noticed yeah yeah and also the fact that they will treat either acting music as something easy instead <laughs> of finding something stable you know what i mean the other day yeah 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 like the other day i was having this conversation with a friend of mine and i was like but well, I mean, we were talking about this, you know, he was he was more into the side that acting and in, in, in music is easy. And I was on the side that is the same it thing, you not. know, because I was telling him, like, check this out. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's kind of the same thing as regular people do. I mean, instead of yeah. going to a job interview, you go you go through auditions, you know, yep. you can submit a lot of auditions or you can submit a lot of job interviews and you can connect anything, you know, and yep. once you find something, then you're good to go. But at least on the stable job, you get the opportunity to get on, you know, on um weekly, monthly uh, yes. income here and there. You know what I mean? So it's it tends to get like more relaxing, you know, but at the same time, it's difficult. So I do think that both disciplinaries are same difficulty level and perhaps acting is even like a little bit more because of all of the fact that people who wants to pursue that career, you know what I mean? So, yes. And I would challenge anyone who thinks that acting is easy to memorize all of Hamlet's lines in Hamlet and then go from there and come back there and talk go. to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, tell me, let's say that you get the chance to change one thing about the whole acting industry. Tell me, what would it be and why? Ooh, 
Um, I think there are still um, too many men <laughs> in okay. general. We, oh, sure. I, I want it. I want it to be a more even playing field. Like I want yeah. more female directors to be directing me, mm. especially in plays that are by female playwrights or telling women's stories. I think we just were, we have too many male playwrights. We have too many male actors, too many male directors. I just want it to be more even, mm. more balanced. Like there, um, a show I just did marketing for, um, it's um, a, a play where a title care, where the title of the show is a, a female character's name. Um, and it is just a two character drama and it was a male director. And again, the lead is very clearly the title character, a woman. And she requested, she was like, can I just have another female voice in the room? And we were like, oh my gosh, yes, of course, obviously. And so we went out and hired an assistant director for her that was a woman. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, like that was so dumb on our part to have this show that's whole story is about a woman. The title of the show is this character's name. And we had a male director and she was absolutely right to have ask for that female ad and under it's no knock at the male director he's lovely and he knew that play backwards and forwards and he was perfect for it mm. but it was a really great call to just have an assistant director that's a woman yeah so i would just say have more women in all spaces especially casting there's so many horrible stories with the casting chair with all the horrible producers like harvey weinstein uh randall emmett like people that used those like vulnerable positions of luring women in mm. saying, Oh, I'll give you a part in my next movie. Just come upstairs to my hotel room. If we have more women in casting chairs or just spaces like that in general, I think it would be a much healthier industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's horrible. It's, and all, it's scary. It's, it's scary. Sad. And it's, it's very deep. You know, I have yeah. heard a lot of, a lot of those kind of stories and, I once yeah. had, um, I got an audition and it was on a, a perfectly legitimate website. And I got the email from him saying, I loved your, re- your resume and your headshot. I would love to bring you in. Here's the address for the audition. And I Googled it and it was a man's apartment. <laughs> and I was like, what? And so I emailed him and I was like, hi, just clarifying that this is an apartment and it's not a studio space. And he was like, yes, it's my apartment. And like, didn't say anything else. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, mm. I'm just supposed to go to your apartment for this audition. Um, but it was a really great audition. And he was like, clearly not making a big deal about it. And I was like, oh God, like, what do I do? And so eventually I found a male friend that was willing to meet me in the city and go with me to this audition. And I ended up like bursting laughing as soon as I walked into the room because it was this guy's apartment, but in like the waiting room was his dining room, living room. It was like four women who looked like me and then like three boyfriends and one mom accompanying all of them. Not one girl showed up to this audition Uh by herself. They were all freaked out like me and brought a parent or a male friend or boyfriend or something to feel safe. And it ended up being legitimate. The guy was just a little cheap. He didn't want to rent out a studio space, but he had a massive apartment and we had all of the auditions in his library. It was weird, but it wasn't like creepy weird. But just the fact that like he felt like appropriate to have, I thought it was appropriate to have an audition in his apartment and didn't think like to warn women, just sent out like an address and was like, yeah, Mm -hmm. just show up at this time. Like, but I, again, I I just burst out laughing when I saw everyone in there with a with a male escort or a mom, and I just was like, so everyone else found this creepy too, and everyone else just burst out laughing. We're like, yup. And so, like it, again, it ended up being fine, but like it's absurd, like the types of situations that we'll sometimes put ourselves in just for a job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can I can imagine how strange that might be, but also. I was going to say that don't do good things that look bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. That was a situation where I, again, where I said, you know, when you should say no, I should have said no to that. I should never have gone to a guy's apartment, but it was right when I was just graduating from college, I was trying to get experience on my resume. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to do this, even though I have a really bad feeling about it. Yeah. And like, I, I went about it as safely as I thought I could in the time by bringing a male friend with me. Shout out to John McHale, who is still a hero in my book for going with me that day. There you go. Um, 
<laughs> like I shouldn't have gone, but again, like it, it's just the stupid things that we do to get jobs. But I, again, I wish that there had been a woman in the room or a woman sending the emails or just, we, we can be better about the situations we're putting actors and women actors. Yeah. You know, I do think that perhaps, I mean, perhaps for that guy was kind of completely normal, but yeah. Cause I asked him about it and I was in the room. I was like, dude, why are we in your library? Like, what is happening here? He's like, yeah, you're not the first person to ask me. He was like, it was just so expensive to rent a studio space. And he's not wrong. But if you're there trying to run doing a project yeah, there, professionally, yeah. you yeah. need to start out professionally. Yeah, there are ways of you to do it. And to there kind of are better avoid. ways than yeah. having yeah. you be like, you you could have gone to like the New York library. Like we, they have like spaces there that you can rent out or use. Like there were different ways he could have gone about it than just casually having like five women over yeah his- yeah and also i mean sometimes there are like either restaurants or coffee places yeah can, like you just sit there with like a book places. in your hand at like mm-hmm. yeah like a starbucks or something and just go back and forth so Ugh. yeah and i mean <laughs> and, and, and now that you mentioned that like how you manage to distinguish from a real one and from a shady one i mean as you mentioned yeah. right back when you are recently starting out i mean you tend to be super naive you know because yeah. you you, you just have want... no idea what you're getting yourself exactly, into exactly right so how you manage to kind of distinguish from the real ones and the shady ones yep yep it's it sucks <laughs> yeah it sucks absolutely i mean i mean but but like how you uh, like, like how, I, again when, when i followed up i'll never forget yeah. like, i'm sorry can you clarify is this an apartment or a studio space and just like the cavalierness of no it's my apartment and i remember showing this to my boss i was at my day job being like hello and he was an actor too and he just burst out laughing he's like you're so getting murdered <laughs> he's like how do you get yourself into yeah. these situations and i was yeah. like it was, legit. it was on our it was on a legitimate website i'm not crazy <laughs> But and still, again, like it did end up being a legitimate project. It was just super creepy and weird. Creepy. I mean, at the, at the beginning, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I would, I would recommend to those who wants to, who wants to do, who wants to kind of do like those type of, you know, project thing like that, to make to make sure that it that you are, even if you wanted to save up some money, but if you want to make it look pro, go pro. You know, don't go cheap. Yeah, it's or like even look... you said, like something as simple as just doing a reading in Starbucks that would have yeah. taken so much pressure off yeah. of all of us in that room that assumed there was a 50% chance we were getting murdered. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would, it, 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 it would have been more scary that, that you go inside you and he's like, like butchering something. Like I'm just preparing yeah. my dinner and you'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like I remember getting to the building and John just looking at me going, all right, we're here. Do we actually want to go in? Cause it was just like a sad, sad looking like printed out Microsoft word, comic sans sign that was like, auditions this way and he was like we can still turn around I was like we've made it this far and he was like okay I really hope we don't get murdered and I was like you it's on you like I'm not defending us you are the reason we're not going to get murdered so stay sharp here Mm. and we just walked in together but again we both burst out laughing when we saw everyone else in the room had brought someone nobody showed up by themselves yeah it's a bustle yeah it's crazy wow wow yeah (laughs) I mean that's yeah as I said I mean that is Part of the things that sometimes we the audience don't know about you know that we think yeah. that oh they they have it easier or like or, or like things like that but yeah like going i mean i wouldn't do it to be honest i mean i'm i'm yeah i wouldn't do it you know like uh like to find this type of location to be like mm, i don't know it kind of looks like a little bit shady on it yep. you're just gonna turn around and pretend like oh i forgot sorry you know or things like yeah. that. <laughs> i i thought about it but at that point i was like We've come all of this way. We're going to do it. If we're going to get murdered, yeah. it's, it's, we're, if we die, we die to quote Rocky five. Like it just, it was, it was what it was at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. But tell me what advice could you tell? Yeah. What, yeah. What advice could you give to those new actors who are, you know, recently started on how to distinguish from a real edition and a fake edition? It, yeah. Um, use real website i mean again this one came off of um a a real website but in general like if you're on playbo if you're on backstage if you're on um actors access those are really legitimate sites so you're probably going to find solid work through there um otherwise just do your research i (laughs) this is gonna sound terrible i was once offered a part in a short movie and i was ready to say yes because the pay was 
amazing. And then me and my girlfriend did like a quick Google of this guy. And I kid you not, we found three images of him wearing a swastika. And we were like, oh my God. Oh no. And it was, we like triple checked that it wasn't like for a film or anything like that. It was just him casually wearing swastikas on his social media. So I declined hard and so fast. And he even messaged me and was like, I'm very confused. Can I ask why you're saying no? And at first I tried like lying. I was trying to be polite. And it's like, I'm sorry, I, I've got some matinees that are just going to interfere with the filming schedule. So unfortunately, I have to decline. And then he was like, well, I'll move around the schedule for you, which is a red flag. Like no, no director flag, yeah. is going to move the schedule around for you. And my, my one friend joke, she's like, Emily, like he's wearing swastikas and I love you, sweetie, but you have blonde hair, white skin, blue eyes. Like I'm getting nervous for you. Like what you, this part would be in the film for you. So I just, I was like, I appreciate it. I'm not interested. And he emailed me one more time and I was like, please stop emailing me. I'm so sorry. Like, good luck with your project. I'm not interested. Please stop. So like, just like doing your research is really imperative. Just like uh, do a Google on any name that you can find attached to the project. Even Mm -hmm. if it's just a production company, there are places online, there are message boards that are active that say, stay away from this organization. Or I had a really negative experience with this touring group. They don't do X, Y, and Z. So there, there are, there's always an answer out there just Google it and you can find stuff. And it might be really positive, wonderful things where people are like, yes, work with that person, but do your research because you could end up in a Nazi propaganda film. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, no, 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 don't do it. Yeah, I, it, I, I was so wanting it to come out so I could see it and like laugh and, and just like relish in the fact that I, I made the right choice. But I think it got shut down with COVID. It was like February 2020 was when I was messaging back and forth no. with this guy. So I don't think it ever came out. But I'll just I'll never forget my friend being like, Emily, don't be in his Nazi film. Yeah, no, no, they don't. But like, you know, I would say also if something is too good to be true, it probably is like the amount that he was willing to pay for me to be there for the amount of days that I actually needed to be there. It was not, it didn't add up. So there felt like a little fishy. Yeah. Going back to trust your gut, trust your gut, do your research. And if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Wow. I mean that's definitely that's definitely on the top of most weird stories ever, you know. I have so many weird stories. That's crazy. Okay, what is your top top two of weirdest stories ever? Top three. Oh top three. gosh, I mean the the Nazi one's always a classic. Um, I had an audition, which I feel like it, it is so absurd that like it doesn't happen to other people. Um. I was in Ripley Greer Studio, which is a very old building. I'm sure every actor that's in the area knows Ripley Greer. Um, And so I gave the woman my headshot and my resume and she's looking at it and she's looking down at it like this. And she's like, you can begin. And I was like, okay, great, thanks. And so I take like my first breath in to be like, all right, I'm gonna do my monologue. And I kid you not, like the world's giant, like mouse, rat, whatever New York City creature thing was it just burst out and ran right in front of me like an inch away from my feet and I scream oh my god it's a mouse like I start freaking out and she's looking down at my resume so she just is assuming that I'm doing a monologue about a mouse so she is not <laughs> looking up and I'm like no miss excuse me there is a mouse and she's like what oh my god and then she screams bloody murder and she sells screams follow it follow it And I'm like, I don't want to follow, but okay, this woman that's holding my career in her fate and like my fate in her hands is telling me to follow this creature. So I'm going to follow this creature. And so I'm running around this audition space, following this mouse to do what with, I have no idea because if I caught it, I wouldn't know what to do next or how to catch it. But she told me to follow it. So I'm following it. I'm just running around the studio. And then finally she gets up and she starts running around with me and it's like, get it, get it, get it. 
And then it just ran through like what I can only describe as like a stereotypical cartoon mouse hole, like what you would see in like Tom and Jerry cartoons or like yeah. Roadrunner cartoons. It's just like this small dark hole in the wall and you just ran into it. And we both just looked at it and she was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go get, tell someone about this. And so she left and I was just in the room for five minutes by myself. And she comes back and is like, okay, so you can go, you can do your monologue now. And I was like, huh? I, I did not get the part. Oh, uh, dang it. <laughs> I did not get it. Um, but I'll like, I'll just never forget that one of just like, follow uh, it, follow it. And be like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll follow it. Yeah. yeah. And I can understand like during all the hype of the moment, you didn't thought about it to be like, like, what the hell? No, you follow it. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, like you just, you're like, oh my God, yes, yeah, this yeah. woman in, in power is telling me to follow this mouse. My God, I'm going to yeah. follow this mouse. And like in hindsight, I probably should have said like, hey, can I have like 15 minutes, go grab some water, come back in. And I'm yeah. sure she would have given it to me because the it was such an absurd situation, but I didn't. Um, I just went with it and um, it was just, I lost all the air. <laughs> like it was just, it was just gone, but I'll never forget just like, oh my God. <laughs> There was like this large rodent thing. Um, it, it it was this massive thing. Uh, I love that. Have you ever thought about having like a like at some point, of course, on your career, making a book out of it? I've thought about doing like really uh, not bad TikToks, but I thought about like doing a TikTok series of like bad auditions or things that's happened yeah. to me in the room. Um, Because a lot of my stories really are absurd and weird. And like people have bad audition stories, but I feel like I've got like really weird audition stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> so you I have... definitely thought about doing some TikToks of like, oh, are yeah. you an actor? Do you want to hear some things? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we are, I mean, it happens. It's inevitable, you know, for you to have like a, like a very uh, fun story here and there on what you do. It happens to all of us at some point. Yeah. Know? I just feel like I have like a few more than like the average. Yeah. Wow. I love it. Let's <laughs> make that happen at some point or who knows, maybe a film. Yes. You write it. I will. I'll star in it. There you go. We're going to make it happen. We'll make I it happen. It. I love it. I love it. Now tell me like, let's say that one day Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, I mean, you name it. They call you and they tell you this idea, which goes, they're going to make a film in which all of the characters you have played at the moment, all of them, they're all going to gather to celebrate your birthday. But here's the thing. The film needs a name. So how should we call it? I don't know, because I've played such a crazy amount of characters and weird and all just like different varieties yeah. of characters. Um, I, I feel like the, the the most stereotypical like thing I get placed in are ingenues or like the young love interests. So I feel like it would have to be something like 12, 12 characters looking for like a love connection or something. Like it would have to be like romance in December or something. Cause I'm always just playing these women who are looking for their romantic leads. I, I like obviously that's not all of my parts, but I'm usually a young lover in search of a uh in search of a man so I feel like it would be like a romantic comedy with just like two weird psychopaths hanging out as well but they would be like giving sassy advice mm. okay I'll take it I'll take <laughs> it. it sounds for something between like on Netflix and HBO you know something yeah on, yeah I think a, a nice Netflix romantic comedy like mm. in the vein of never have I ever or to all the boys I loved before something like that hopefully yeah. witty fun delightful rom yeah <laughs> now what about describing your whole career but this time on a drink i think i would do a vodka cranberry um okay. one it's my mom's favorite drink so it just it, it makes me giggle by saying it um but i feel like i play like i said a lot of like really sweet characters and a lot yeah. of like young romantic lovers so that would be like the cranberry juice but i have played some uh more ferocious fearful or fear uh just ferocious characters and i feel like that would be the bite of the vodka I'll take it. And how should we call it? Let's say that I want to order that drink. Oh, I don't know. just the Emily. Is that boring? That's probably really boring. Um, I'm trying to think of like a really good character that I've played that would have like a good drink name. Um, 
maybe that's Cecily. I, 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 I've played Cecily in the importance of being earnest, uh, mm. three or four times now. Um, she's a character that I love and she is very sweet, but she's also very insane. And she's got a, a, a really funny wit to her that she does not get enough credit for. So I'm going to yeah. go with Cecily. I've changed my mind. I'll take that. Okay. Okay. Now, what motivates you? You know, we all have those days that we just want to quit. There, it, it, it's inevitable, right? So, how you manage to stay, yeah, like, to uh, to stay positive, but most important, to be back again on this road that you have been in for so many years now. Yeah, I mean, I I love just being on stage, or just I love acting. Um, so that feeling of when I'm performing for someone. Yep. It just, it, it it's such a, a high, it's such like a drive the, to go through all of those emotions while you're doing the play, like that, is, that release, that high is what I chase all the time. And I, I would be lying if I said it wasn't a little bit of a fear of failure. Like I've been doing this for so long to just kind of stop and give up now. I'm like, what? Well, what would that say about me or why, 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 what would I, what, how would my life change? Like, I feel like it would be worse if I didn't have like these creative outlets and I would mm. just be like considered a failure or a quitter or something like that. That's yeah. always some kind of like in the back of my mind, but I'm overwhelmingly uh, reaching for that high on stage of just wanting to get out there and tell the stories and be in front of people and, and share these works with everyone. Mm. Okay. And my last question. Oh boy. There you go. <laughs> it, it's an easy one. So let's say that we're going to make a film about this, uh, about the episode we just did right now. But here's the thing the film needs a name. So how should we call it? Oh, man. I don't know. How, how, how is this for you? <laughs> I mean, it was epic. You know? epic. Okay, so let's see. The Epic Adventures of Emily and Dan. <laughs> yeah. You got it. I love it. I mean, because, because this is going to be the title of this video. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, at the end, what can I say, Emily? I mean, I love your career, and I'm so in love with what you do because you are making it happen, you know. And 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 what's what, yeah, like what motivates me is the fact that you that you keep doing it, you know. That regardless of how difficult the road might be here and there, which it happens to all of us, you're still hanging to it, you know. I mean, we know that it's not easy, and we know it's a pain in the butt, but you are making it happen, and I'm super sure that our next conversation is going to be about the multiple thousands millions of projects that have been in because I, do, I hope so yeah i do believe that good things happen to be to good people you know to those who are doing things by heart you know and yeah keep killing it because you're making you're doing a fantastic job here let's face it thank you i so appreciate it absolutely i also want to thank those who watched this thank you so much i mean i said at the beginning don't forget to leave a like subscribe follow it helps a lot leave me a comment let me know what you think about this conversation if you want to add something else let me know but also on this on the description below you're gonna find all of emily's social media let's follow her, you know let's Yay. make it viral hashtag team emily because she's, she's incredible <laughs> and again emily thank you so much keep killing thank you. it keeping a badass and i'll see you in the next one yes thank you this is so fun all right